Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A very good day to you and welcome to the special broadcast as we will be interviewing a representative from Direct Aid International as well as uh, African Muslim Agency and Dr. Vincent Joseph in studio with us. Assalamu alaikum to our director today, uh, Hafiz Imran Junara. Shukran so much for joining us. Alaikum salam, how are you? Shukran for having us on ITV once again. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Uh, Vincent Joseph, thank you so much and, and welcome to the studios of ITV. Thank you for having me. So, as director of Direct Aid International and Africa Muslim Agency, and we all uh, very well know Africa Muslim Agency, please uh, give us some information, background, and the connection between Africa Muslim Agency and Di Direct Aid International. Oh, I think you know ITV viewers are very, well, uh, very um, you know they know Africa Muslim Agency yes. very well. You know we've been on ITV for quite a while, alhamdulillah, and. Um, one of the things that I think most people would know us for as Africa Muslim Agency is that we operate all over Africa. Uh, and let me just give you some background very quickly, briefly, is of course Africa Muslim Agency started back in Kuwait, back in the early 1980s. Mm -hmm. A few Kuwaitis got together, moved, went to Africa, saw the need and decided to help people in Africa. And of course, because they were Muslim people from Kuwait, decided to call themselves Africa Muslims Agency. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they approached my dad back in the 87, uh, 86, 87 year in South Africa to open up an office here in South Africa as well. Mm -hmm. So the South African office now has been going for you know whatever you know almost 29 years right now you know uh, here in South Africa as well and uh, and you know but you know most people would know this by now that we have offices in 29 countries in Africa we're on 160 schools in Africa three universities multiple clinics eye clinics and all the different types of uh, stuff that we do in Africa mm -hmm. and of course disaster relief like Somalia and those kind of things mm -hmm. but most of the schools we run I mean all of them pretty much and the universities and hospitals you can't it's not just designed just for Muslim children. Yes. So about 15, 18 years ago now, the name was officially changed to Direct Aid International, all okay. over Africa pretty much. So pretty much all the countries in Africa operate under Direct Aid International, but right. South Africa, you know, it kind of had this, uh, donors had this uh, d uh, emotional connection to Africa Muslim AMA. Agency and of course to AMA. And so it's still, we still operate under Africa Muslim Agency here, but also as Direct Aid International okay. uh, here in Southern Africa as well, like in the rest of Africa. Now a quick synopsis, I mean, you know, just uh, last year, for example, as most people would know now, we built water wells in different parts of Africa. South Africa offers pretty much responsible for Mozambique and Malawi. Last year, we built over, over 600 water wells okay. uh, in Mozambique, Malawi, which benefit, of course, thousands of villages, giving them access to drinking water now okay. changes people's lives completely, of course. Uh, of course, we support orphans uh, in different parts of Africa as well. And then, of course, the flood relief that's happening right now in Malawi and Mozambique. There's yes. huge floods happening yes. there right now. But anyway, that's discussion for another time. That's okay. not discussion for today, but it gives you a brief connection. But when we link AMA, we immediately think of direct aid. Of course. Shukran so much, uh, Hafez Imran. So Dr. Vincent is here today with us. Um, we will be finding very excited to find out uh, Dr. because Dr. is an orthodontist. Yes. So tell us about the connection between uh, direct aid and National and Dr. Vincent Joseph. I know it's a bit odd. I mean, when you think about it, but how this really started, how a relationship really started again, and we know again, you know, that nothing is just by chance. Yes, you know, everything happens course. by design again. Absolutely. And I was an, a patient of his uh, uh, in his orthodontic practice mm -hmm. here in Cape Town, with very successful orthodontic practice, and I was a patient there. And uh, he, you know, he didn't know what I did, and he was just sharing with me one day while in his chair mm -hmm. some of his passions and what he's doing, and just some of the stuff outside of what he does in his practice. And of course, just hearing that, it got me excited about you know, he is a professional person, mm. uh, successful in his profession, uh, and wanting to make a difference in people's lives. Yes. And then got, out, got us excited. He started sharing with me some of the stuff he does in Lebanon. I let him share all the details because okay. I think he's much more equipped to do that. Uh, but we started as direct aid saying, wait a second, we have donors that want to fund Palestinian and yes. Syrian relief and children okay. and benefit uh, what's going on in that part of the world. Mm. And so um, we kind of wanted to be on board with some of the stuff that he was excited about and some of the stuff that he was pursuing. Mm. Uh, and that's kind of how that relationship started, very loosely, uh, again, you know, by design, of course. You know, it's just, everything is, nothing is coincidence. And it's Higher planet first. Absolutely, for sure. <laughs> Shukran so much, Hafiz uh, Imran. Now, Dr. Vincent, please tell us your story. Uh, also, Don, just doing, uh, visiting Lebanon. Tell us uh, how that all ties up and your relationship with uh, Hafiz Imran. Thank you. Um, I've been visiting Lebanon for a number of years, probably since about 2006, since mm -hmm. the last major war and have seen a need in the country 
as the refugees have spilled over the borders because of the various wars, um, to be able to provide for refugee children who have got uh, minimal facilities in the hospitals uh, that are there. Okay. Um, in May of last year, I went over on my own basically to see what uh, situation was like there, how I could get assistance from either the UN or from any organization on the ground mm -hmm. that was providing assistance for them and was fortunate enough to meet up with PCRF, the Palestine Children's Relief Fund. Um, mm -hmm. That was my first knowledge of them, my first time that I would met them and came back to South Africa uh, with the idea that uh, we could then join this uh, major body in America mm -hmm. by forming a branch here in Cape Town called the PCRF Cape Town. Correct. We have a Facebook page by the same name. And, and that's PCRF Cape Town Palestinian? Palestinian Children's, Children's Relief, Relief Fund. Fund. Okay. Yes. And uh, this is one of the chapters, one of the 29 chapters throughout the world mm. of PCRF which are based uh, in the States, um, basically out of Kent but uh, spread out all over the place. So the different coordinators are in different parts of the States. Mm -hmm. Because of technology today, you don't have to live in the same city. Um, a very big organization now in the States okay. uh, and is run on a multi-million dollar uh, oh. budget. Uh, started by a journalist 29 years ago by the name of Steve Sosby mm -hmm. and now has grown into a major, major funding campaign. Uh, at the moment, they're busy in Gaza. They're building cancer clinics in Gaza. Um, the actual relief work is amazing when you look at how they will respond to winter demands mm. because of uh, cold and because of deprivation of people there. So, so anyway, I came back to Cape Town. This was now in May, June of last year. Okay. And Imran happened to be in my chair. And I was saying to him, wow, I've just met this fantastic organization and I really want to get involved with them because this is a passion that I thought mm. I could uh, become involved with being an orthodontist. We are part of the team that treats cleft lip and palate. Okay. And because of that, I have an intimate interest with what's going on with cleft lip and palate. Uh, mentioning to him uh, obviously stirred something in him because he said to me, wow, that's interesting. Can we talk more about mm. it? And one thing led to another, and eventually on my next trip over, which was in September, uh, which was fun funded by Direct Aid International, uh, I went over to join the first mission of PCRF to Lebanon to do cleft lip and palate work, the first ever mission. So they hadn't operated in Lebanon before. They'd operated in Gaza, they'd operated in Jordan, okay. they'd op operated in the West Bank, uh, they'd operated in many other places in the mm. world, but not uh, in Lebanon. So I went over and joined the mission that went there and was a very successful mission. On average, we treat about uh, six, seven operations a day, six, mm -hmm. seven children a day. So you would be able to complete about 25 cases a week. Mm -hmm. And that's working quite hard. That's a 12-hour day. Um, came back uh, from that uh, very enthused. I was lucky enough to have also the funds that was provided by direct aid mm. uh, to take a photojournalist with me and he recorded a lot of the information that obviously you will see and this was um, the really important part of it because mm. you get messages through by showing pictures mm. not just by talking and uh, the pictures uh, says a thousand talk, words talk. Yeah, 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 they do. now your trip over mm. that you went to um, in September the mission trip that you yeah. went, joined uh, with direct aid international Talk to us about that trip. How did that trip make you feel? Because you came back and wanted to do, make a change, um, PCRF being in the background as well. So um, to our, our viewers today, please explain your personal experience, your visual, visually pers personal experience and how that made you feel. Yes. Um, when you are trained as a professional, as an orthodontist, as a medical doctor, mm -hmm. um, especially in a cleft lip and palate situation, you are expecting to see a certain um, person come through the door with a certain type of deformity. Um, what knocks you off sides a bit is when a person comes in with totally different um, injuries. Uh, if they've lost their hand, mm. if they've lost their eye, 
if they've lost fingers, sure. uh, if they've got shrapnel injuries in their face that they can't mm. smile. Um, this is what came through the door. You then have to look at them and say, what can I do for this patient other than just treating them for cleft lip and palate? Okay. And in fact, this is the case of Nawaf, who basically needed an operation to his mouth because he had shrapnel injuries through his lip into his jaw and we had to create a, a, a space behind his lips so that he could talk and close his mouth. How old is Nawaf? Nawaf is 15. Wow. 15, yeah. He's, yeah. he's, he's a young boy, but he's a strong boy. And um, basically, um, once he was under general anesthetic, you had a chance to see his other injuries and mm. to really look at them. And it was at that point that uh, one thing led to another and I started thinking, well, when I get back to South Africa, there's a possibility mm -hmm. that I can now see, can we not treat Nawaf in South Africa mm -hmm. with the artificial hand called Robohand okay. uh, that has been used successfully here on a farm worker, Flippy Engelbrecht. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no reason why that shouldn't be possible. Mm. So we started the process of doing that. I came back and reported to Imran about Nawaf, and immediately Imran said, that's it. That's the case that we must be looking at. This so is what we want to get Nawaf. on. And of course, as you say, fate takes you. It, it was decreed. Like it's they say, the like rest that. is history, eh? Yeah. yeah. So tell us the history, um, Hafez Imran. Um, you've heard the story. Yes. This, uh, as Dr. Vincent mm. mentioned, is quite emotional. And um, going back and, and seeing that, as you say, we want to help. I mean, you're in that field. Absolutely. So the connection came about, and immediately a, um, a, a direct aid international jumped in? Well, I tell you, you know, how I, for me, I mean, when I travel through Africa as well, it changes you. Mm. When you see a child, I mean, you know, adults and adults, and, and you know, we have a, all of our opinion of different people, but when you get to a, see a child, mm. and you see that child in need, I don't know an adult on this planet that cannot feel for it. Yeah. I just don't know. Yes. So in Africa, when I, I mean, when the doctor came back, because when, when he went on the September one, and, and we, we a direct aid came on board to fund him and, and mm. photojournalist. journalist, and when they came back, and he showed me some of the footage, I remember sitting with him, and he showed me some of the stuff. I mean, for me, it was just Noah, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at Noah, he just stares all the time. 15-year-old boy. I've got sure. a 17-year-old daughter. I've got a 14-year-old daughter. I've got a 10-year-old boy. I mean, this could be my child. I mean, it's just unbelievable when you think about it. And when I saw that, that excited me. Excited me from a way perspective because, number one, it drove my emotion to see that this child, his eye was stitched shut, the one eye. I mean, you know, he had, when doctor told me about the shrapnel injuries in his face, and, 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 of course, his hand being blown off, and he can't use his hand. He's a 15-year-old boy. He should be able to function. And, and when doctor said, hey, Imran, I've got some solutions to this. I mean, we could bring this guy here. There's the RoboHand initiative we could work on together. You know, without thinking about it, for me, it was just like we must find a way. Okay. We have to find a way to partner with PCRF on the cleft lip and palate thing, but to partner with Dr. Vincent and the PCRF Cape Town guys to be able to make it different with RoboHand. Mm. So for me, I'm very passionate about it. I'm passionate about it because when you change a child's life like that, I mean, when you do 25 or mm. six or seven operations per day on the cleft lip and palate thing, mm. wow. and that's, you know, 20, 30 operations per week. Sure. If we go over there and for not much money, actually, we can make these it's robot hands <laughs> and you can put 20 or 10, 20 hands on different kids. Mm. You change their future. I mean, now you don't know which family, which child you touch now mm. is going to make a difference to this world in their own way. Why wouldn't we get involved? Absolutely. We talk more on how you can get involved after the short break. So stay with us. Direct Aid International is in studio with us and representing PCRF, Dr. Vincent Joseph. Don't go anywhere. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good day. Welcome back to our special broadcast with Direct Aid International, Africa Muslim Agency, and Dr. Vincent uh, Joseph. Orthodontists are playing a very special role um, in today's conversation. Welcome back, guys. Assalamu alaikum and very good day to you. So, Dr. Vincent, you've mentioned cleft lip palate. This could be extremely unknown to a lot of people. Please just um, explain it to us and talk to us about the sort of challenges that children that suffer from this um, might experience growing up. Um, to explain cleft lip and palate, one has to just understand 
that there are two distinct variations of it. Mm -hmm. One can be a cleft just of the lip itself, okay. one can be a cleft of the palate itself, or the other third variation can be a cleft right through into the palate. Okay. And during the formative stages, these shells that grow across mm -hmm. uh, of the tissues do not actually form correctly and they don't close off the actual area uh, uh, that is meant to be closed off. Okay. Hence you have a space and a gap. Mm. If you have a cleft palate, it is uh, quite a, a serious condition because any food that enters your mouth could now in fact go the wrong way down into your lungs. So you have to be very careful with liquids. Mm. You have to be very careful with any solid foods that don't go the wrong way down to where it uh, shouldn't be. Uh, so from a functional point of view, mm. that is one of the major downsides to it. And from a uh, aesthetic point, or from 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 a phonetic point of view, mm. um, the patient will have difficulty in uh, pronouncing and being understood by his colleagues and, and friends. And Islam is one of the patients that we'll, we'll see. I'm quite sure mm. uh, where he speaks to him quite normally, but mm. we almost can't understand what he's saying. And his friends at school will say we can't understand you. Mm. So he's been ostracised. He's been maybe marginalised. But he's a, he's a bright child. Mm. Uh, what he needs basically is to have his palate closed okay. and he will talk properly. I've yeah. seen some of the pictures. These kids mm. look so happy. I think you, you've mentioned it and, and you just think, ah, oh, ooh, you know, and Aina, and, uh, you know, how these, these kids get through their day. Um, mm. Mm. But they, they're joyful, they're happy, mm. and they're pleasant, even mm. though they have this challenge. Yes. Um, what is surprising to me is how quickly they recover okay. from the surgery that we put them under. Mm. And within two or three days, they're back to almost normal again. Mm. Uh, and we think, wow, well, this kid is really going to suffer from what mm. we've had to do now today. So yes, they are very uh, resilient yeah. uh, in, 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 all, in all manners. Mm. Uh, but they know that basically they'll come out better, so yeah. that they, they, they're quite happy to actually And there's some do great it. before and after pics as well, um, one to view on your website, and I'm sure... Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And just from the aesthetic point of view, if you see the ones of the lips of uh, Time of Mancalo, uh, she's got a double cleft of her lip on the outside. And she's a lovely little girl, mm. and she's going to have such a great result. We've now got the three-month follow-ups, okay. and she's looking good. She's looking really great. good. Great, so are, are kids usually born with this? Yes, this is this is a birth defect basically. Okay. Um, it's in a very small proportion of the population. Uh, it's about 0.1 to 0.3 percent of the population, mm. and it and it doesn't vary much from one country to another, from one area to another. Um, reasons for it are still not totally understood. Okay. Uh, they think that it could be dietary linked, it could be alcohol linked, it mm. could be uh, stress linked. Um, there's still not a good understanding on it, to be quite honest. Thank you so much for that. I hope that clears up some questions on cleft lip and pellets. So, um, Hafez Imran, I believe there's a mission going out to Lebanon very soon. Tell us about this mission. What happens during a mission? You hear a mission and you think, Wow, mm. these guys are going to go out and mm. so tell us about mission. Oh, I think you know it's um, you know just listening to Dr. Vincent again. I mean, it's just you think about a small child being ostracized, being cast out almost mm. because their parents cannot afford, uh, or even if they could afford, there isn't the facility available. Absolutely, being in these refugee camps. I mean, you can imagine what they're running away from already. I mean, they already got so much stress in their lives, and this little child and with the difference a person can make. Mm -hmm. So the next, I mean, when Dr. Vincent came to me and said, okay, Imran, you know what, PCRF runs these missions regularly. Yeah. And PCR is very happy, PCRF Global is very happy to give the PCR Cape Town chapter mm. the responsibility of running the missions to Lebanon. And he said, hey, you know what, what do you guys think? And we were like, well, we'd, be, we'd love to be a partner on that. Mm. Uh, and so we, uh, we adopted this, uh, this uh, notion that we'd love to be a partner with PCRF Cape Town on the next mission. Uh, for the cleft lip and palate thing. Okay. So the next mission leaves actually in a few days, inshallah. Oh, uh, in about 10 days time, inshallah, 9 days time right now. And there's a few doctors, which I tell you, you know, we'll name them another time, but there's a few doctors in Cape Town and in Johannesburg that have given up their time at no cost mm. to go on this mission. And this is a South African-run mission, pretty much, headed up by Dr. Vincent for the, uh, for the cleft lip and palate uh, okay. operation side of it. So they'll be there for about 7 days. About 5 of those days will be 
uh, operating on these kids, as Dr. mentioned as well. Mm. Uh, but specifically alongside this mission, which is really exciting. You know, Dr. talked earlier about, you know, someone's hand being blown off in conflict mm. and that. So, you know, um, when Doc came back, he, he investigated, as you mentioned earlier, and he found out there's a gentleman in, in Pretoria who developed, you know, using a 3D print technology okay. to be able to create robotic hands or robo hand, as he wow. calls it, where a child can be able to function normally. Yeah. And so alongside the Cliff and Pallet mission leaving next week in about 10 days' time, also mm -hmm. alongside that robo hand mission's also leaving as well with a bunch of South Africans going over mm -hmm. to train some people locally there in Lebanon in the refugee camps. Mm -hmm. And we'll be doing between 10 and 20 hands while we're there in the next 10 days, inshallah. Wow. And that'll happen when we'll take before and after photographs, mm -hmm. of course, and bring them back to show people as well what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So that's happening in the next 10 to 11 days, inshallah. Okay. All these guys are going from here to Lebanon. We'll be there for a few days uh, and inshallah come back with some live footage on that as well. I know that uh, PCRF does have a Facebook page where they can actually visually see what yes. these kids look like and what's, what's happening. Yes. Does Direct Aid International have um, information on a website or somewhere where people can also be directed to, yes. to have a look? My at? suggestion to donors again is that think about the first These missions cost money. Mm -hmm. On average, a PCRF mission, for example, with the Cleft Lip and Paddle will cost an, cost an average of about 100,000 Rand roughly okay. for a mission to go. The Robo Hand mission, for example, this particular one is in excess of 150,000 Rand. We're yeah. sending over the 3D printers and all that kind of stuff. Of course, over time, depending how many operations, how many hands we do, mm. the, 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 the costs will change. But of course, donors, my suggestion, my, my plea to donors would be, on the screen, you can see Direct Aid International's website details. You can see the telephone numbers, the banking details. The first thing to do is, of course, these missions need money. My suggestion, my humble plea to people is, look at your children, think about your child having a situation like that and not having medical aid or not having the ability to be able to go and fund it at the hospital mm -hmm. or even a government hospital that can do it. There, there isn't that kind of facility. So my suggestion is contact the details, you know, the banking details are on the, t on the screen, con contact te telephone numbers, the website details, and go to the PCRF uh, Facebook page and have a look at some of the images to get, to get a perspective of what's really going on. But I think, you know, in closing, maybe, mm. we know as Muslims, Man lam nas, lam one who cannot thank man appropriately, cannot thank Allah appropriately. Mm. So if we cannot thank each other, how can we thank our Creator anyway? Because really, that's what we are here for, is to benefit each other, help each other, grow each other, change each other. And you know, firstly, I want to extend the thanks to Dr. Vincent. I mean, if it was not for him and his passion, we wouldn't have been partnering on this mission. Mm. And then I want to thank the donors, for what they've already done for Africa Muslim Agency and Direct Aid International all these years. But I want to plead to you, once again, South Africans have big hearts. Let's partner on this project. Let's make a difference in the next week or two to the kids in Lebanon on the Cliff Lebanon Palette uh, side of it with PCRF, an normal organization, and with the robo hand and changing people's lives on a daily basis. Contact the details on the screen below now and also the bank details as well. Um, AMA Direct Aid International has a website. Yes. Um, it's on screen now as well. I think, Dr. Vincent, if we can have some closing comments from your side. I, I've heard lots of things, the relationship that started, a beautiful one that has grown, and so much more uh, You know, professionals and, and individuals are brought together to come on board to do this. And I'm sure you have a wonderful team um, as well. So in concluding, your words, sir. In life, um, I think fate has a lot to do with uh, how you progress in life and mm. how you uh, um, allow yourself to go down certain challenges. Um, you must be open-minded enough mm. to actually accept these challenges and to see people all as equal and all with the same needs. Mm. And uh, if you can do that and you have the good fortune to meet people like Imran, then you have everything. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And uh, that PCRF uh, Facebook page, Cape Town, people can visit, visit it now um, to get those beautiful pictures of those lovely kids, happy, flamboyant and excited, not really realizing what's happening around the, the, the deformity that they, they might be suffering from and being ostracized by, by, you know, because other people are ignorant about it. So find out about cleft lip 
and palate um, deformity, as well as this robo hand. What a great initiative. I was listening to Dr. Aswell earlier and talking about how easy this procedure is as well, Absolutely. and how, how successful um, these operations have Absolutely. been going, alhamdulillah. So um, a great initiative to support. Please contact the details uh, on the screen below. Visit Direct Aid uh, website to find out more information. And of course, the choice is up to you. So Imran, your last, quick, your last words quickly to the donors as well, where we see things going from here, and also your mission, what date is it leaving exactly? The mission leaves uh, around the 20th of this month, inshallah. But, uh, you know, closing words. And doctors said, you know, to meet people like us, we say this to our staff, and we say this, we've said this many times on ITV, we are all tools in the process. Mm -hmm. We are just tools in a process. It's none of us that's the magic. We are tools put together to benefit humanity. So we are grateful to be another tool. And that's how we view ourselves. And the donor, you're a tool as well. We are all tools put together to benefit somebody. Our Creator, as we know, Allah does not need you and I to fix something in this world. He could fix it without us. Mm. But He allows us the ability to be able to earn some benefit, some reward, some gratitude to be able to help someone else. So let's come together in doing it once again, inshallah. Shukran. Shukran so much, Director of uh, Direct Aid International, Hafiz uh, Imran Junar, as well as our orthodontist here today, Shukran. Dr. Vincent uh, Joseph. We appreciate it. Yeah, in Cape Town, I'm Hawa Salomon. Shukran so much for joining us. Contact the details on screen below. Visit the website, uh, uh, PCRF Facebook page. Uh, I couldn't get enough of those pictures. See the team, um, the guys at work tirelessly behind the scenes and doing some great work. The mission leaves very soon. Direct Aid International is doing some great work as well, headed by Dr. Vincent Joseph. So contact the details now and be a donor. Be one and make a difference. Shukran again for joining us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and a very good day to you. From Mauritania to Ethiopia, from Tunisia to Somalia, we are the children of Africa. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah.